Question, how much does a road cost? I really couldn't tell you, nor could I estimate how much the other public infrastructure on my street sets the city back. I just have no idea what it takes to build, service, and maintain this stuff. Most of us don't have a real understanding of what infrastructure costs and how we contribute to it. If you're like me, you tend to just trust that your taxes have got it covered, right? But if our taxes covered all the costs, we wouldn't keep hearing stories like this. Our roads and bridges are crumbling, our airports are out of date, and the vast majority of our seaports are in danger of becoming obsolete, all the result of decades of neglect. Important, basic infrastructure is falling apart, and yet we keep cutting the ribbon on new projects. We've created a system that feeds on short-term growth, like building new roads and subdivisions, but doesn't account for the long-term costs of that development. And we fund new infrastructure from various sources, so the people that use infrastructure don't necessarily pay for it. That's a surefire way for us to demand a higher level of service than we're actually willing to pay for, because someone else is footing the bill. Let's go back to my street. Imagine that me and my neighbors did have a clear grasp of how much infrastructure really costs. And if we had to take direct responsibility for those costs, we would almost certainly build differently in order to be frugal. Maybe we'd say, hold on a second, I can live with a street that's two feet narrower. And we would be sure to ask, can we afford to maintain this in the long run? We don't get to make those decisions because our system has designed that feedback out of the process. And unfortunately, most of our city officials aren't making those decisions either. They are trapped, like the country at large, in the illusion of wealth. The illusion of wealth means that we think we're doing okay because we see growth and development happening. What we don't see is that the way we are building our cities is actually losing us money in the long run. Since we've been doing this for 60 years, the long run is finally catching up with us. Here's how it works. Let's say that a developer comes to our community has a piece of property they want to build on. They say, we're not asking for any subsidy at all. We'll build to your standards, the roads and the streets and the sidewalks and the curbs and the pipes and the pumps and the valves and the meters, we'll, we'll build it all. The only thing we're asking is when we're done that we be allowed to turn this over to you, the city, for long-term maintenance. This is the, you know, a dream come true, right? We get all this new growth that costs us nothing. So the developer goes out and builds it, turns it over to us, and we decide we're really prudent people. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the revenue that's now coming in from this new development. We're going to take the portion that would normally go towards maintaining all this stuff. And we're going to set that aside. We'll allow it to accumulate. And then when we get out a generation and we have to actually go out and make good on that promise we made that we will maintain it forever, we'll just use that money to do it. This is what that would look like. In year one, the development's brand new, the revenue comes in, you set aside that portion, and every year that goes on, you continue to add. And when you get a couple of decades out, you have a lot of money. The problem is, when you get to, in this example, year 25, and you have to actually make good on that promise you made way back in year one, the cumulative amount of revenue that you brought in is insufficient. And from a cash flow standpoint, you run far into the negative. This is why cities, having done everything right for two generations, are now looking at bankruptcy. Because as we all intuitively understand, if you lose money on every transaction, you don't make it up in volume. We have built so much that it's like we've inherited a mansion, but the heating bill is multiple times the size of our paycheck. So what do we do? Even if we were to raise taxes astronomically, or to experience explosive growth, it doesn't fix our illusion of wealth. It doesn't change the fact that a lot of this country will never break even financially unless we take a very different approach to development. This is the yellow line from the road. I'm pretty sure the plow picked it up. Good news is the paint is going to last forever. The bad news is <laughs> we don't know where it goes. <laughs>